Hey everybody, this is Captain Yeet here for you for the cartoon talk. This is going to be number 49 and we are going to be doing Nomona. Now that movie just came out uh, about two, three days ago. It came out Friday, so it was like two or three days ago. It was a really good movie. I really liked it. Uh, how did I find Nomona? Now, I know I wasn't going crazy. I could have sworn I heard the name Nomona, like the movie, so long ago. But this movie, you know, just got announced and it just came out on Netflix. So I was like, I could have sworn I heard about it when I was looking up reviews and stuff. Yeah, this movie was announced like years ago, but then it got canceled. But then Netflix and Blue Sky picked it up. So now it's coming back out again. And well, now it is out. <laughs> and I really like it. Um, oh, I also wasn't going to say about Nimona before I get into the movie. Oh, yeah, it was a book. I never read the book. Well, I think it was a comic, a comic book. I don't know how long it was or how many issues it was. I never read it. Uh, when I was looking at some other reviews for the movie, they saw like the cover for it. That looked familiar too. I, I mean, I probably saw it like in the library or something. I just never picked it up. But you know, it was a book. And also, I don't know because Blue Sky they're the one that made the movie today. But I don't know if they were the people that was gonna make the movie back in the day when it get when it first got announced and then canceled. I don't know if they were gonna make the movie first and then they canceled it and they're like, you know, let's pick it back up. I guess that could have happened, you know, they're like, hey, we, we, could, we could pick the movie back up, because that has happened before, they cancel a movie, a studio, and they pick it back up, or they give it to a different company, that could happen, so I don't, <laughs> like I said, I don't know which one happened, or if Blue Sky was the people that was going to make it back in the day or not, I don't know, um, anyway, this movie is about, <clears throat> okay, I had to make so I was saying the name Ballister, right, I kept thinking I wasn't going to say the name Ballister, right? Anyway, this movie is about um, this kingdom that's surrounded by a huge wall. And it's surrounded by a huge wall to keep monsters out. And the founder of this kingdom, like, defeated a monster like a thousand years ago. And her descendants and all of royalty, their kids and their kids' kids, they trained since childhood to become a knight. So whenever a monster does come, they can attack the monster. But, you know, they get the huge walls. But, you know, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Our main characters are Nomona and Ballister. Now, Ballister, is, he's not royalty, so he's not allowed to become a knight. But he always wanted to since he was a kid. He literally jumped over the fence and declared he wanted to become a knight to protect the kingdom. And for some reason, <laughs> like, when he was a kid, when he jumped over the fence and he was like, you know, I want to become a knight to protect my kingdom. Like, four to five grown men and women knights just jumped this little kid. <laughs> like, if you watch the movie, he was like, I want to become a knight. And they just jumped him. <laughs> I don't know if it takes that many people for a kid, guys. <laughs> it's like, they just truck this guy anyway um the queen allowed it and they're going against trans tradition the queen you know at the time is allowing ballister to become a knight he does become a knight he's one of the best of the best and he's also in a relationship with the descendant the direct descendant of the founder um golden heart i think yeah go no my bad golden lord that's his name i said golden heart golden lord he's also in a relationship with him anyway uh oh poop I think I forgot to say uh, spoilers. I'll probably put, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put in the thumbnail because it's three minutes in. I forget to say spoilers. Uh, spoilers. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put in the thumbnail. What was I, I going to say? Somebody switches Ballister's sword out and there's a laser inside the hilt and it kills the queen. So for a good chunk of the movie, he's trying to clear his name because, you know, obviously he didn't want to kill the queen. Someone switched out his sword. Also, um... What was I finna say about the queen? I forget. Nothing. Never mind. <laughs> but good chunk of the movie, he's trying to clear. Oh, his arm. He has a robotic arm. Because Wanda Laser was going off and he cut the queen. Golden Lloyd, like, chopped his arm off to, you know, he could have just, like, whacked the sword out of his hand or chopped his hand off. But he went, like, over, under with the sword and cut his arm clean off. <laughs> But now, Ballister has one robotic arm. I forget if it was the left or the right. But one of his arms are gone, so he has a robotic arm. So, like I said, for a good chunk of the movie, he has to try to clear his name. Because somebody switched his sword, and he didn't do it. And Nomona, she comes around, and she wants to help him do that. And if he does do that, she wants to be his sidekick. Nomona, or well, like I said, spoilers, I can say, she's a thousand years old. We never really got a clear indication on how she got her powers. I'm guessing she's born like that. I don't know. 
I never watched. I mean, not watched. I never read the book. So maybe they explain it in there. They do try to like set it up to where she like made a wish in a wishing world when she was going over her backstory. But she was just joking around. But in near like the end of the movie when she gets scared and everything, she ran into the woods and we see the wishing well. But then when we go into the actual flashback with Nomona, she's already able to turn to animals. So we don't actually get to see that. So I'm guessing she was just born like that. I don't I don't really know. That was really confusing. She can turn into she's a shape shifter in Nomona. You see her in all the posters and stuff. So she's like she's I mean, her and Balance are like the two main characters. Um I'm all that she can shape shift into any animal it seems. There's like no limit, dragons, whatever, even like fake animals. Cause there was like a dragon on um like this cereal box. She was able to turn to that and she was able to spit out cereal. She could breathe fire. I think the only animals we didn't really see her turn into were like dinosaurs. I can't remember if she turned to like a dinosaur in that, but she turned to like a bear, an ostrich, a whale, a uh, dragon, like I said. She can even just have different parts of the animal. Like, there was, like, a moment in the movie where she only brought out wings of a dragon, but the rest of her body was still human. So that was pretty cool. I only really ever seen her do that. I don't remember a part of the movie where she only brought out, like, the claws of a bear. She did, like, make shark teeth at one point, so I guess we saw that, too. But like I said, we only, I, I only remember, I only, well, I only watched the movie once. I didn't watch it, like, five times. But I really only remember, like, her breaking out, like, wings or, like, a tail or, Something like that. I don't, I don't remember her doing like a lot of different stuff. Um, she can also shape shift into people, and she can shape shift her clothes too. She can sound just exactly like you, look exactly like you. The only thing is, she's gonna have a little pink strip of hair, which doesn't always show up. When well, no matter what animal she turns into, it's completely pink. Her hair is pink, and when she turns into an animal, it's completely pink. Like. Like, so I guess so like Beast Boy when he turns to an animal is all the way green but when she saves him to a human there's a pink strip of hair but sometimes it doesn't show up maybe maybe I was forgetting something when she turned into Bannister to make that distraction on the train when she turned to the side she had like a little tiny strip of pink hair off to the side I'm like okay so now that, like, that's an indicator so you can always know okay but then when she turned into Golden Lloyd to like trick the director into snitching on herself that she was the one that killed the queen, she can um she didn't have any pink hair. Like Golden Lloyd toy turned all around and everything. I didn't see no pink on him. That's kinda weird too. Also, her durability is like iffy sometimes. When they were in the market and they were getting shot at by arrows, one arrow got into her leg. And then, um, Ballister, he took out the arrow and some blood came out, but she was like, you know what I mean? It stung a little bit, but pss, it was nothing. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so she has some pretty good durability. But once she safe sifted into Golden Lloyd, the director literally grabbed the sword and rammed it right through, not her chest, but like her abdomen. Like it was like right, it went all the way through her. And Golden Lloyd was like, oh, oh like it's, it's Nimona safe sifted. I mean, Nimona's like, oh my goodness, oh, and there's like no blood at all. And she just took it out with E, and she was like, oh, was I too dramatic, boss? Eh, just a little bit. I'm like, whoa, that didn't hurt you at all? You literally said, like, the arrow stung a little bit. I would think a whole sword going through you would hurt some. And at the very end of the movie, when she turned into, like, the giant monster lizard thing, she was getting bombarded with, um like, lasers and cannons and stuff. And, I mean, it was hurting her. I feel, I, I'm not going to cry. I feel really bad. Like, every time she got hit with, like, a cannon or a laser or, like, an arrow or whatever, like, you'll hear, like, a monster roar. But in, but inside the monster roar, you'll hear Nimona scream, too. I felt really bad. And then once she turned back into a human, she was pretty messed up. She had, I mean, I don't know if there were scars. They were probably scars. But you, you saw, like, little patches of, like, um, fire, debris and stuff all over. Like, you, you could tell, like, you know, all these lasers, stuff, they were doing damage to her. She was really messed up. <laughs> she was really messed up. This is really crazy. Uh, her personality is pretty, is bombastic. <laughs> it's really bombastic, and she really likes to do metal murder stuff. She, she's kind of crazy a little bit, you know, because um, Golden Lloyd, when he was trying to escape prison, you know, his idea was to sneak around. Don't hurt nobody. Her idea was to sneak around and kill. So that's what she likes to do for <laughs> <laughs> that's her idea she's just really wanky and weird and funny that's her personality um what else to say about the movie uh 
because I, uh, before I started to go into like different parks, I really like I like to talk about the actual movie. And I guess I did do that for a little bit. Um, hmm. I guess I can like the backstory with Namona. I can go into that. Like I said, we didn't really get to see exactly how she got her power. She just always had it when she was a kid. And I guess it takes a that because she looked like a kid in the flashback. And we know it's been a thousand years. And now she looks like a 13, 14. She looks like that age. But she's actually a thousand. So I guess it takes a thousand years for her to just grow up from a kid to like 13 or 14. I guess, you know, it's <laughs> a little... I don't know. That, that, that's kind of iffy. Iffy. Kind of weird. Uh, anyway. In her backstory, she knew the founder of this kingdom. And she was like best friends with the founder of this kingdom. And it was kind of funny because when they first met the founder of the kingdom, I, f I forgot her name. But um, she would like throw these rocks into a tree stump. And when she saw Namona off to the side as a kid, she was like, oh, come on, you can play with me. And she was like, you know, just throw the rock in the tree stump. And when I had a rock, and she was like, okay. She just threw it straight down. <laughs> she threw it straight down. And then we get like a montage of them goofing around. I'm only changing, changing the different animals, having fun with her. Eventually, the people in the town, like the little village that the girl came from, sees them on a safe tip in the animals. And they're kind of nervous and scared around her. And they like box her into a circle and start to poke her with, uh, I was going to say a spork. But you know, like... <laughs> What is those things? It's like it's like a really big rake for like hay. Like you start to poke her with that. You start to wave fire at her like that. Like they're bullying this little kid because he was like in the little kid form, and then they start to like you know poke her and like do that kind of stuff. And she saves something in the animals, trying to push them back. And then one guy like hit her with some fire, and the moment like knocked it away because you're getting hit with fire, and that set like a chain reaction, and the whole village caught on fire. Uh, the founders like mom and dad was trying to pull the girl back. And eventually, in the morning, like, hey, it's me. You know, I, you know, I was going crazy, but I mean, a bunch of grown men and women were attacking me. And the one that was shaped something into like every animal you could think of, like, you know, hey, it's just me. Like, come on, let's go somewhere. And then the little girl picked up a sword and called her a monster and said, "Go back to where you came from." And that made the morning really sad. It really made her sad in the future when her and ba uh, Ballister were attacking the castle, was trying to get out of there. And there was a car that was trying to hit a little girl, and Namona saved her. And she saved her into her little kid form so she can look more, you know, presentable because she was just a giant dragon. And she was like, hey, you okay, you okay. And that little girl did the exact same thing. Picked up a random sword. Don't know where she got that from. Well, it, it wasn't a real sword. It was like a wooden sword, so I guess it's okay. Um, did the exact same thing. Called her a monster. And that made her feel really bad. I thought they were gonna get kidnapped because they had the morning like a in a box hole, remember? And like the all the electricity on her, and Ballister was getting jumped, and he had, like five or ten guys on him. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is bad. I thought they were gonna get kidnapped. I really thought they were gonna get kidnapped. That would have been pretty bad. Um, my bad. I got something in my eye. My goodness, that was pretty good. There was a clip that was never in the movie. But I keep seeing it everywhere. Which is kind of funny when I'm on trying to teach Ballister how to like thumbs up and thumbs down on things. And I just really like the ending of the clip. Was he was like, "Okay, look, boss. Oh, I just got that. I just got that. Oh my goodness, I just got that." Because I thought they were like doing social media stuff. Like that, that was supposed to be the joke for like a thumbs down, a thumb thumbs up, a thumbs down, or something. But this movie's on Netflix, and that's how it is on Netflix. When you watch something, you can either thumbs down it, thumbs up, or double thumbs up. And Amona was like, if you like something, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like something, give it a thumbs down. But if you really like it, give it double thumbs. And she made herself have two thumbs. And then Ballister was like, click. Hmm. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, because I, I kept thinking, like, what gives you double thumbs up? I just realized Netflix does that. I just realized that I did not know that. <laughs> that is funny. Um, Two parts in a movie that hit kind of hard. That was really sad. When after that little girl called Namona a monster, she was like, you know, I don't know what's worse. That everybody in this, like, town wants to drive a sword through my chest. Or sometimes I just want to let them. 
And then once she started breaking down and turned into the gigantic monster, I thought she was going over to the founder's statue to tear it down because of what she did to her as a kid. But no, she was going over to the founder's statue because the statue is her holding a shield and a sword out. And she was going over to the statue to, to let the sword just drive right through her heart. We get that same narration over, but then Ballister stopped her and said he was sorry for calling her a monster and drawing his sword out that he sees her in Nomona. And he's sorry. She turned back into a girl. And he hugged her. That that was a really sweet scene. And at the end, when the director um, went to go swoop the laser cannon at Namona, even though she knew it was going to kill like half of the town, Namona came in and clashed with it, blew it up. And I'm guessing she came back because she turned into a phoenix. Because she turned into like a phoenix bird thing to like clash with the laser. It blew up. Some time has passed. The wall came down. They're actually going outside of the wall now because there's nothing really bad out there. Nomona's like really the only monster thingy shapeshifter that we know of. And at the end of the movie, Ballister went back to like the little hideout that they had. Tore, I mean, tore all the like wreckage down, made it look nice, and made it like clean up the place. And he hears a knock at the door. So he like runs over there. He's like, Nomona? There's nobody there. And you're like, oh man. But you see some sparkles in the background. And then you hear, hey, boss. He goes, huh? <gasps> what the? <laughs> and then it was the critics. I was like, oh, come on. Like, the whole time, I was thinking, come on. They're not going to kill Nomona in her movie, right? And then the movie just kept going. Like, she's dead. And then we see, like, a whole mural for her. And my heart started pumping. I was like, come on, man. Don't do this. Maybe it's an after credit scene. And then when we heard, hey, boss. I'm like, okay. Come on. So is Nomona. And then it's the credits. I mean, hey, she's alive at least. But pss, I guess not. I don't know if they're ever going to make a sequel. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I heard in the books that they don't really show it like this in the book. When after they see classes with the laser. Um, like, you know, because, I mean, that was plainly obvious that, you know, Nomona's alive. You you hear her. You see the sparkles. Ballister starts to freak out when he turns around. So she's alive. But I heard in the books it was more inconspicuous, if that's the right word. Like, you see, they say, like, you see some animals looking like I think I think they say it's like sort of hinted at you just like it's hinted at Nomona's just turning into different animals to watch Ballister from afar. But then I was like, that sounds kinda stupid. I was like, you know, why does he not wanna you know, hang around him no more? What I was like, you know, but like then I started thinking the ending in the book was probably different from the movie. They probably changed the stuff around. Cause it was the movie ending in the book. I was like, why is Namona hiding from Ballister? Why is, like, that doesn't make any sense. Why does he want to keep a distance? The ending in the book might be different to where she needs to do that, or maybe she wants wants to do that. I don't know. Like, like you know, because at first I was like, man, that's stupid. Man, Namona, go to Ballister. That's your boy. Like, you know, you know, those were boys. They were dancing around and everything with sunglasses. Like, those two goofballs. But I was like, well, the, the ending's probably different, so there's probably a reason. So, okay, it's, it's not stupid. Like, it took me a second to think about that. I was just mad when I saw it, when I heard about that. I was like, what? Why? I was, I was really mad when I heard about that. Um, I don't know what else to say about the movie. I talked about that. The ending was good. Golden Lord, I mean, he was, he was all right. He wasn't, like, too bad. The Squire, eh, I guess he was... It was kind of funny, I guess, especially when Namona was like a little kid trying to um convict him to like you know help this little like this little kid. And the squire was like, "Oh, let me find somebody else to take care of this problem." <laughs> like, okay, that was kind of dumb. Uh, the video he caught of the director switching the swords. I mean, hey, they got proof, but it was really funny because. <laughs> Ooh, it, it was funny because right before the director came in to like you know switch the swords, he was like, "Hey, look everybody, it's Ballister's armor, holy Ballister," and Ballister is like, "Dog, <laughs> what?" <laughs> Namona's looking at Ballister, Ballister looking at Namona, and she's like, "Awkward. This is <laughs> this guy. <laughs> what is wrong with him?" That was kind of funny too. Um. I guess that's everything about Nomona, huh? Not like everything, everything. You know, I didn't go through like the whole movie. But like the main stuff and the stuff I liked. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Actually, let me pause it to make sure I don't forget anything. 
Okay, yeah, that's really about it. I guess one more funny moment I want to tell you is when they were playing, um, they were playing chess, not chess, they were playing some Monopoly board game thing, and the Mona lost. Well, see, well, the Mona had to pay him, like, $300, and the Mona started spazzing, uh, started saying all this random stuff, started, like, messing up the pieces, and Bowser was just looking at her, and she was like, I'm still taking the 300 coins. And she was like, what? And she just breathed fire <laughs> over all the game. And he's like, what the heck? Man, give me the coin. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's about it. But Namona is really good. I suggest you guys go watch it on Netflix. It's, well, it's going to stay up there. It has the end on it. So it's here to stay forever. <laughs> I don't know if they're ever going to make a sequel. I think they animated like the whole book series thing already so unless they want to go off on their own continuity or whatever i guess this might be the only thing we get from namona which sucks because this movie was pretty good but i mean hey they already did the whole book so <laughs> it's whatever but uh that's about it so like say and subscribe i see you all later i thank you all for watching i thank you all out there for being wonderful human beings and i see you guys next time bye bye all right